This is MSJ Chem and in this video I'm going to look at orbital notation diagrams. So that's writing orbital notation diagrams or electrons in boxes for atoms and ions. So we'll start by looking at the electronic configuration of lithium. So it's 1s2, 2s1. So once we have the electronic configuration we can draw the orbital notation diagram or electrons in boxes. So we draw square boxes and they represent atomic orbitals. So here we have a square box that represents the 1s atomic orbital and here we have a square box that represents the 2s atomic orbital. Before we start drawing our electrons in boxes let's review the Aufbau principle which is electrons fill lower energy orbitals first and the Pauli exclusion principle which is an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons with opposite spins. So keeping these two points in mind, let's start writing our electrons in boxes. So the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s1. So according to the Aufbau principle, we're going to start filling this 1s orbital first. So let's start by putting two electrons in the 1s orbital. The electrons are represented with these one-headed arrows and according to the Pauli exclusion principle, an orbital can hold two electrons with opposite spins. The opposite spins are represented by an up arrow and a down arrow. So now that the 1s orbital is full, we need to put one more electron in the 2s orbital so we can do that now. And this is the orbital notation diagram for lithium. Let's try another example. The electronic configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So now we're going to draw the orbital notation diagram for carbon. So we start by filling the 1s orbital first with two electrons with opposite spins. Moving on to the 2s orbital, again two electrons with opposite spins. And then we move on to the 2p orbitals and we put one electron in this box and one electron in the next box. The order that I put these two electrons in the 2p orbitals is important and it's known as Hund's rule. So we're going to look at that next. So here's Hund's rule. Each degenerate orbital in a sublevel is singly occupied with one electron before being doubly occupied and the electrons have the same spin. So what does that actually mean? Let's have a look at an example. This is nitrogen. The electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So we start by filling the lowest energy orbital first, which is the 1s orbital. Then we move on to the 2s orbital and now we're on to the 2p sublevel. The 3p orbitals in the 2p sublevel are degenerate orbitals. That means they have the same energy. According to Hund's rule, each degenerate orbital in the sublevel is singly occupied with one electron before being doubly occupied. So therefore we put one electron in this p orbital one electron in this p orbital and one electron in this p orbital. And as you can see, all these arrows are pointing up, which shows that they have the same spin. So let's have a look at one more example. This is oxygen. The electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So we start filling the lowest energy orbitals first, which is the 1s orbital, then the 2s orbital, and then we get to the 2p sublevel and we have three degenerate orbitals. So now we have four electrons to put in the 2p sublevel and according to Hund's rule we fill them singly so we put one in this p orbital, one in this p orbital and one in this p orbital and now that each p orbital is singly occupied we put the remaining electron in the first orbital with an opposite spin. Next we look at orbital notation diagrams for ions. So the electronic configuration of the ion atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. So here's the orbital notation diagram and you'll notice that I've used abbreviated electronic configuration and what's left is the 4s electrons and the 3d electrons. The 4s orbital fills before the 3d orbitals so we'll put two electrons in there and now we're on to the 3d sublevel. The 3d sublevel is composed of five degenerate d orbitals. So according to Hund's rule we fill these singly with electrons with the same spin and once each orbital has one electron in it we go back to the first orbital and we put the remaining electron in there. 
So next we'll have a look at the electronic configuration of the Fe3 plus ion. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 and 3d5. We've lost three electrons, so we've lost these two 4s electrons and one 3d electron. So here's our orbital notation diagram for the Fe3 plus ion. We only have the 3d sublevel left because we've lost the two electrons in the 4s orbital. So according to Hund's rule, we fill the degenerate d orbital singly. And here you can see that each d orbital has one electron with the same spin.